I'm interested in how our sort of informal learning experiences are being reshaped by the technologies that are woven into our lives. And so, for example, you know, we hear a lot about online communities. So Facebook, LinkedIn, 43 Things, those are very popular social networking sites. A lot of professional associations have discussion forums for colleagues to exchange ideas. Businesses are always keen to get in on the action, so you have a lot of online product groups for people that have bought a product or service. And the scale is quite astounding. Like last year, Yahoo reported over 113 million members in over 9 million groups. And that's a lot, and that's just Yahoo. So I think People are going to online communities for something, socializing, networking, business opportunities. Um, and I'm curious about them as sites of learning, and more specifically, sites of informal learning. And so I'm exploring how self-employed workers are using online communities for work-related learning, and what that experience is like for them. In my own work, I have a focus on helping to design online and blended learning spaces for people in developing and emerging countries. And this has been an amazing opportunity to take some of the possibilities that I think informal learning offers, extend that with some of the capabilities of technology, and try to really create very innovative learning solutions that are done in collaboration with people in those countries. In our department, it's very common for students to be involved at an international level. However, for Terry, who's looking at adult education, it's perhaps a little less common. However, her work is what has, I think, really precipitated the kind of interest that, that it's generated internationally. So she's on call now uh, for the kinds of, of work that she's doing. I think one of the cool things about studying informal learning or people's learning in the everyday is it gives you a reason to kind of rethink what learning is and who gets to call it learning and really even what teaching is. And so I think you can take those kinds of insights into non-formal and more formal learning settings and start to really question learning and teaching and, and, and how to do that sort of thing. So I hope this research facilitates a more careful look at the nuances of online communities as sites of learning and then it provides insights for people in those spaces, workers, learners, for practitioners who are attempting to design these kinds of spaces or even more formal kinds of online collectives and then also for policymakers who are focused on informal and lifelong learning policy agendas. You know, this doesn't just apply to self-employed workers, you know, I think it has some utility for citizens in general. Most graduate students you work with have, have got a fairly good sense about what they want particularly to do and how they want to go through that process. And you do some of that with Terry Lynn, but she's such a fast study that it's really not about that. That she can learn. What she really wants from you is to get inside your head and figure out how you're thinking about things, which can be quite scary. <laughs> One of the things that really surprised me about doing a PhD is how much I love to do research and how interesting it is and how endless the possibilities are for doing research. And then I think by taking that sort of excitement that I have for that and my interest in actually trying to do practical things, I think it makes for a really interesting mix. And that's what I want to keep doing.